All right, let's walk through getting into the boat. There is a, uh, a uh, simple connector here. It's a twist off connector. That front rigging line comes off. The rear one stays connected because the entire upper deck uh, is all one piece all the way to the back. There's a simple screw uh, in the back and uh, you just depress it, twist it 90 degrees and the whole thing lifts off. It's really easy. There you go. Uh, now that we got this off, let's take a quick look inside here. This is the intake for the air pump and that comes up through this uh, I guess it would be a snorkel uh, intake or, or the, uh, the mast periscope in the conning tower. So that's nice and high. It'll begin drawing air uh, much, much sooner. Something else to note that I forgot to mention before. This is a 2.4 gigahertz submarine. And I am beginning to be uh, a convert because it offers a lot of advantages over 75 megahertz. Um, of course, the big disadvantage is you cannot fully submerge the boat to the point where everything is under the water. But I think the other advantages uh, more than make up for it. This is the antenna and uh, it goes all the way up to the top. And I mounted this in a flexible piece of plastic that is supposed to mimic another one of the periscopes. And that gets installed. Uh, right here in the top pushes up and through and uh, now you've basically got another periscope in there that's housing that 2.4 gigahertz antenna which means you can submerge all the way up to here without losing signal for the boat so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this back out again we'll set that upper hull down and uh, we'll grab our cylinder I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, throw everything inside. We'll take our battery and that just nestles in this forward compartment. There's some bulkheads in there and that's now seated in there really, really nicely. It won't go anywhere. We got some Velcro straps. We're just going to flip those off to the side. Take all of our cables. Intermediate joint. This dog bone joint slips into the, the gearbox there and to the rear of the cylinder. That's all hooked up. Now we're gonna drop the cylinder in place. Now there's a little, if you look underneath, brass peg, and that goes into a hole in the bottom of the ballast tank. We're just going to uh, give that a little wiggle. Power cable gets routed all the way to the front. And the really cool thing about magnetic linkages, right onto the output shafts. Now everything is all hooked up there and we'll do the same thing at the front. Done. This is now uh, basically ready for the top to go back on if, if of course I took the time to put these Velcro straps back on. We'll do that in a minute and then we'll show you how to put the top on. Okay, in theory, uh, we should be ready to test some of the functions. So let's start uh, at the aft end. We got nice deflection, uh, probably a good 30, 35 degrees, which is exactly what we want. We've got uh, our override for the stern planes, and that is on this auxiliary channel right here. That uh, is routed through planes. And of course, that is nice and smooth. Uh, you know, I've mentioned before a true mark of a good drivetrain is the fact you'll be able to run it at very, very low RPM. Here. This kicks on the air pump. You can hear that running. It's drawing air through this uh, intake. And if we move it in the other direction, opens up the vent, lets all the air out, and the model would submerge. So, all of the functions are working. We're now ready to put the top on. As I mentioned uh, before, um, what we're going to do is take the 2.4 gigahertz antenna. We're going to throw that up in there. We'll take our intake hose, connect it to the top, 
Now you can actually pull this up, draw up the, uh, the slack there, and you can pull it all the way out and uh, set the forward end in, draw up that slack. Now that that's seated, you just kind of push it back down. That's all set to go, and the only thing left to do at this point is uh, put that screw back down there. It locks everything in place. Attach the forward rigging back to the uh, tower there, and we're ready for the pond. One thing that I want to talk about here is this, uh, you know, so-called uh, deficiency of 2.4 gigahertz radios. Um, in practical application, what I've found is there is absolutely no reduction in enjoyment in operating the boat, and it actually forces you to be a better sub driver because you want to make sure you keep that periscope above. Now. If the periscope happens to drop below the surface of the water, you lose signal. But the advantage to this system is you can tell it what to do when that happens. And in this particular case, I'm going to show you exactly what happens. Um, I'm going to simulate that by simply turning off the transmitter. So it's going to happen almost instantaneously. So as soon as the boat loses signal, I have programmed it in such a manner that the throttle will uh, set itself to about 30% forward, so it'll retain a forward movement of the boat. Bow planes go to full rise, stern planes go to full rise, and the boat brings itself back up to the surface, antenna comes back up, 
signal is regained and you simply go back to driving your boat as though nothing happened. So it's actually really slick. I'm gonna show you how that works right now. I'm gonna turn it off. And there we go, we've got full rise on the planes, 25% throttle, full rise on the stern planes. Signals regained. I've got full control over the boat. And we go back to uh, operating our boat as though nothing happened. So it's really a seamless exercise and uh, absolutely in no way reduces the enjoyment of uh, operating the boat. Actually, to the contrary, I feel much more confident in driving this boat. I'm gonna put my boat uh, towards the 2.4 gigahertz. In some applications, 75 is gonna be what you want if you got a fast boat that is uh, you know, gonna go fully under the water all the time. Or if you operate in clear water like swimming pools a lot, obviously be great to be able to dive fully. But for the most part, and especially for big boats, uh, 2.4 gigahertz has my vote. I hope you enjoy. Uh, this little project here, I'm going to have another video out very shortly for the sister ship for this, also built by Duane. It's a big 30 second scale S-Class submarine, so watch for that coming up here right away. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. You can email me anytime at bob at rc-sub.com. I'd love to hear from you. Be sure to check out my website at nautilusdrydocks.com for lots of information, uh, tips, resources, products, kits, and all sorts of other cool stuff. Uh, again, my name is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the nautilusdrydocks.com. I want to thank you for joining me and we'll catch you next time.